Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. I'm Tara Nancy, and today we have the one and only, my boo. <laughs> What's your name? <laughs> this is David Yancey, and today we are having a totally candid conversation. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> um, totally candid conversation about the hottest topic right now. Oh boy. Can women preach? Now I know what I think. Well, I know what's truth. Yeah. And today we're going to be speaking truth on that topic. And um, because I know there's lots of ladies out there who uh, have something to say in a good way. Well, guys, in a good way. Something to right. Say. Right. And the religious spirit. Uh, which is a mind-bending spirit and a machismo spirit and a um, an idiotic spirit likes right. to shut that down. Right. So today we're going to be talking about can women preach? And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell, and you will be notified when either I go live, we go live together, or we're going to do something. So... Um, Today is a good day. It's a good day in the Lord. And <laughs> well, you, know, you just kind of dropped this on me. I don't have anything prepared. You yeah. don't have anything prepared. No, no. You don't even have the scripture cited that okay. people contextually abuse okay. to shut women up. Okay. First of all, I want to say we have been married. Our wedding anniversary is coming up in a few weeks. Yeah. And we will be married for 18 years. So, talk about, uh, we can talk about this as a married couple, yeah. because we are a man and a woman coming together to do the Lord's will, and um, and we have two different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think it's pretty awesome that we can run together in unity. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like, we both equally have voices. And when you say two different perspectives, don't paint the picture that it's because you're four women preachers and oh, I'm against. No, 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 it's no. Not. No, <laughs> two different perspectives of the world as a man, as a woman. Yeah. And on this topic, like, yeah, it's. Yeah. Well, my goodness. Yeah. The religious spirit is an infectious uh, demon. And, um, preach it, brother. <laughs> I tell you what makes me angry. It makes me angry when I scroll social media and I see women posting mm -hmm. attacking against women. Mm. It mm -hmm. makes me mad and angry. Like, oh, you know, especially if they actually come after another woman and name them by name and say, sit down and shut up in the back where you belong. Mm -mm. And it's like, my lord, um, mm. you're you're you. Not only are you shackled and in chains, but you right. are celebrating your shackles and trying to spread them onto other people. Right. And of course, this this machismo spirit that's running around the church, uh, it cites mm. verses with absolutely no. Uh, depth of knowledge of what is going on and what is referenced, and I don't want to get too deep into that because I don't have anything prepared. You just kind of dropped this on me. Right. But what? Okay. Are you looking at machismo? I'm looking up the definition of machismo. So I know exactly. I mean, I know what it means, but I like really want to know the definition. Ooh. So in the Oxford dictionary, wait, is this the Oxford dictionary? I don't know. In the dictionary, it says it's a noun and strong or aggressive masculine pride. So when I think of mochismo, I think of Gaston from Belle. Yeah, from Beauty and the Beast. I mean, uh, yeah, sorry, <laughs> from Beauty and the Beast. And, and first of all, let me say, before all these accusations mm -hmm. come out, I am not anti-masculinity. And mm -hmm. masculinity is not toxic. No, no it's uh, not. We've got, a, we've got mm -hmm. a, a demon running around in, in society trying to uh, mm -hmm. demasculate so that mm -hmm. it can advance. Right. Uh, because. Right. Yeah. Can the real men please stand up? Yeah. Um, anyways, we're going to we're going to go all over the place here if we're not careful. Um, <laughs> masculinity is not toxic right. and neither 
is femininity in its own right. Uh, and, and it absolutely has a place in the church and in the pulpit. And it's just crazy to me. No, people don't read their Bibles. And, and what's so funny is they would use that argument against me. Mm -hmm. They would say, you don't read your Bible there. You didn't see where it says, I do not permit a woman to. Pre okay. You have never read your Bible mm -hmm. with understanding. Right. You've never read your Bible with any relevance to anything mm -hmm. other than bedtime story time. Mm -hmm. Well, it said this in plain black and white, and that's mm -hmm. the fullness Mm -hmm. As if there's nothing beyond the sentence that has been labeled down on the tissue paper right. in that little ink right there. Right. Like that's the whole extent of all of it. And, and right. it's a leadership problem. The church is asleep. The church is in a coma for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. um, and the people that perpetrate this whole women have no voice and they should, you know, like, let's just talk about what was done about five or six years ago with the whole go sit down and go home. What was it? Go home. Oh, um, MacArthur. Yeah. What was that? He came, I can't after, remember. He came after a particular woman and mm -hmm. not a fan, but mm -hmm. she was not doing anything wrong there. And he said, go home. You're a woman. Shut mm -hmm. up. Go home. Mm -hmm. uh, can I just say, I apologize for such a ridiculous machismo spirit that is just running rampant in this i'm better than you my mm -hmm. role is different than her role her right. role is different than mine. Mm -hmm. i cannot fulfill her role she cannot mm -hmm. fulfill my role mm -hmm. we are separated we are created equally mm -hmm. yet different right but to say that women have no voice by god's design you are a fool and an idiot and uh, I'm sorry. I, you want me to talk about it? I'm just going to talk about it. I just, oh, no, no, no. I'm not laughing at that because I wanted to say something. She like thinks that. I'm excessively harsh. And, and it's like if somebody were to point at the sky and say, that's not blue, that's purple. Like at first it's going to be like, okay. And then after a minute and it's going to get old. And it's gonna be like, hey, moron, it's not purple. Shut up. Right? So that's where I've gotten right, right. to this topic. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm the same way. It it makes me very sad for the women and especially um, women in ministry and being a ministry wife, just like we're just as anointed as the man. And yeah, yeah. I know um, there's going to be people that are going to say they're just going to quote scriptures and they're just they have nothing to say because they're intellectually dead. But mm -hmm. all they're going to do is copy and paste the scripture and say, proved you wrong right here. And they have absolutely no idea why mm -hmm. Paul addressed what he was addressing. They have no idea what Timothy was going through as a leader. Uh, they don't. They couldn't even mm -hmm. tell you anything about what temple prostitution was. They right. couldn't tell you anything mm -hmm. about uh, uh, religious ceremonial prostitution and how none of that is currently... In, in by and large in the mainstream church, mm -hmm. none of that is going on right now. These were specific <laughs> cultural things being addressed. Right. I don't permit because, and although it doesn't sit there, he, Paul didn't think, hmm, in 2,000 years from now, we're going to have a bunch of stupid idiots, these mm -hmm. Calvinists, these cessationists, these anti-women mm -hmm. uh, people are going to go, well, he didn't specifically say right now for today. He figured that people were mm -hmm. smarter than that. Um, no, I'm getting off on a tangent. I'm just going to cost you followers. Sorry. I have a hard time not saying truth. We need right. truth tellers. And, um, and I, right. I can be corrected and I, mm -hmm. and I can concede that I've been wrong on something, but are you kidding me right now that Jesus has created women less than men and like, Oh yeah, you've got a mantle in your life, but you better go sit up and shut up, but sit, mm -hmm. sit down in the back and shut up. Okay. It's men turn. You you serve a God that's like mm -hmm. that because that's not the God of the Bible. Right. Uh, let's let's put some understanding to these scriptures. If you don't know anything about temple prostitution, then you shouldn't be talking about what Paul was addressing. 
because right. you absolutely know nothing of the culture. You know nothing of this of the town and the city that Timothy was in building. You have no understanding of any of that mm -hmm. stuff. Then, uh, then you've obviously put no effort other than taking this and going line by line. When they were bringing out the money which had been brought into the house of the Lord, Hilkiah the priest found the book of the law of the Lord given by Moses. That's the extent of your understanding. Then. Mm -hmm. you, you're not in a place to tell somebody to sit down and shut up. If that's the extent of your understanding of this divine word of God, this infallible word of God, uh, then, then you're in no place to tell somebody they have no voice. And it right. is God's will for them to have no voice. Right. Well, right here, you read that. This I highlighted this like quite a while ago when I opened up my Bible today to do this live. Like this fell open to here in Second Chronicles. Was this thirty-four? Um, oh, I just I just want to show you like hold up. Is that how you smell? Say her name, Holda. You probably can't even see because light, but it says Holda the prophetess speaks. Oh, dang! Like, God allowed a woman one to be a prophet, and yes, there are women prophets, absolutely. And uh, two, oh, look, the, the prophetess spoke, uh, spoke the word of the Lord. So, um, right there in scripture. And you can't say like, oh, that's Old Testament because God did not do away with prophets. And it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Like, Absolutely. People are given a voice. They were women apostles. Right. And it's in the New Testament. Right. It's funny how that doesn't get brought up. Right. Oh, that's also the same people uh, that say that there are no apostles today are the ones that say that there's no women. And, right. and it's, no, it's no, no coincidence because we have explicitly written... Prophet female, apostle female, uh, evangelist female, and and um, so of course they want to dismantle the existence of God's government, which God's church government, God's body government mm -hmm. is the fivefold ministry. Mm -hmm. Of course, we want to remove uh, mm -hmm. certain things for today, as if oh, it just it magically disappeared. Uh, you know, there's a church around the corner from here, and uh, it, it, it's okay. I'm going to gripe. There is a church around the corner, not too far from us. And it's, it's a, it's a redone building. I thought, okay, I, I'm going to check out their website. Mm -hmm. I was driving by and I'm like, Oh, yeah, it looks not dead religious. It looks, it's got a makeover. Let's just go. So I go to the website mm -hmm. and the uh, first thing I look at is what we believe. Mm -hmm. And immediately I, I go and find, you know, are these cessationists? Um, and it says, while the Bible does not explicitly say that the gifts of the Spirit are not for today, we discourage these gifts. In fact, we encourage our people of a more excellent way to just love one another. And we do not want to see any of the gifts of the Spirit in operation in our church. Wow. And the mm -hmm. gifts of the what? Spirit. We do not want the Spirit of God in our church. Wow. wow okay. That's and sad. that's an example, right, mm -hmm. of the same Spirit that has infected people to tell women, go home. Go right. to the back and shut up. Right. And, and it's a Spirit. Like, gosh, that's what's one thing. I, social media can be a wonderful tool. But what I hate is the level of just cannibalism mm -hmm. and dishonor that's mm -hmm. on Facebook and, and yeah. in Instagram and, and all of the platforms. I hate it when I see women told to shut up and sit down. And I especially hate it when I see women telling other women to shut up and sit down because it's like you're in, you're, you've, you're shackled to a mindset and you're right. against self whether you realize it or not. Right. We shouldn't be, like women to women, we shouldn't be turning on each other saying, you know, shut up, go sit down. We should be championing one another. And I'm not talking about like feminism and, you know, all that, because 
I hate to break it to you, but we cannot live life without men. We need men right. in our life. We need their protection. Like the Lord set up family this way mm -hmm. as the man at the head of the household yeah. and not as a dominating, you know, well, submissive. The worldly feminism is just as bad of a spirit. Right. You know, and that the, the worldly feminism is absolutely evil and rotten to its core, just like the religious spirit mm -hmm. that would tell women you're worthless is is rotten to the core. Right. Yeah. So we need men and we need women to be who we were created absolutely. to be absolutely. so that we can advance the kingdom of God as God designed it both. Those two genders. Well, I think that there's a Deborah Mantle coming back to the church. No, absolutely. Um, and, and for those of you who are Bible illiterate, Deborah was a leader as a prophet and a judge over the entire nation. And so I just think it's so funny when we have people say, well, yeah, a woman could lead the whole nation, but she better not be caught preaching. Like, are you flipping right. kidding me? Right. Um, and, and like I said before, if you're just hopping on, and this is all, is all tied Right. To a complete illiteracy in scripture and understanding of, of, of uh, cultural surrounding and current events that were going on that were being addressed. Right. And for those of you, I know a lot of my followers uh, are new in their walk with Christ. And so just so you know, um, like women... You have a destiny, you have a purpose and like read the Bible for yourself and get to know Jesus and who yeah. he says you are. And like, you need to have voices in your life that are uplifting. Um, and I'm not talking about this false definition of love. Uh, 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 you know, right. listen, there are standards there, are, but, but, and, and there's a time to be quiet and sit down. There is. For men and women, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you, whether you're a man or a woman has no, has no impact on that. There is a time to be quiet. Mm -hmm. There's a time to be fed milk, mm -hmm. to mature, right. to good, be, begin to grow. Be, and then we go from milk to meat and then you get to get to your own voice. Right. right? Uh, so there is a time where you should two ears, one mouth, right? Listen twice as much as you speak. Right. But to say that because you are not a man, you have to sit down and shut up. That's, that's absurd. Right. Then God created you not equal. Right. And that is a lie from the pit exactly, of hell. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And, and, you know, there's going to be people that accuse, right? Who cares? Who cares? You know what Satan means? Satan means the accuser. It's not mm -hmm. a proper name like his birth certificate says. Oh, Satan. No. Oh, that's an interesting name. I haven't heard right. that one yet. Like, that's not a proper name. Satan's the accuser. And it's just mm -hmm. so funny how cannibalistic an accusation, which is the nature mm -hmm. of Satan, runs rampant through the church. So it, anytime somebody mm -hmm. wants to unlock someone else's identity, unlock their destiny, speak life, right. here comes the accuser. That's the nature of Satan. Right. Um, get to know the heart, the root, mm -hmm. and the intent of a scripture. Right. And, and I'm not a person to say that the Bible has to evolve to the culture. So anybody that wants to say, you know, I talked about not having cultural relevance uh, to what they were going through. No, 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 no. I'm not suggesting the Bible transforms according to Western right. culture. Absolutely not. I'm, I'm saying that the writer was addressing something that mm -hmm. was a current event. Right. Still applicable to today, but not not in the fact that the that the, the literal word is literally uh, a rule. The thing being addressed was the rule. Paul was right. addressing temple um, prostitution and religious ceremonial prostitution. Right. So Anyways. with that, I want to say it is time for the Esther's and the Deborah's to arise in this hour, not as a feminine feminist movement in the church, as a but yes, as a kingdom movement to advance the kingdom. We are carrying something so 
powerful on the inside of us. We have destinies and we have voices and we have a message and that message, like that is your message to carry. And God, when he, he knit you together, he knit you together the way that you are, the way that you dress, the way that you speak, um, the things that you like. He did that for a reason because he is creating a message within you. Everything that you go through in life, it creates who you are. Not in the way that, how would I explain that? It adds the things that you learn and the lessons that you learn from the things that you go to. You don't get your identity from the things that you go through, but you're going to learn. You're going to learn lessons and you're going to speak wisdom from those lessons and help others who are experiencing what you were experiencing. Like, man, can you imagine if the world would allow women to rise to their full potential and cast out demons and heal the sick and invite them to speak places. And um, like, man, if that were to happen, we wouldn't have this demonic agenda of worldly feminism, right? The church has caused a problem where women feel uh, oppressed by society and held down and held back. And I'm not a victim mentality a uh, type mm -hmm. of person I don't like people to carry a victim mentality. I want you to get the proper healing, which is in the blood of Jesus. I'm not, I'm not against you. I'm for your freedom. I'm for your deliverance. I'm for your liberty. But to walk around with a victim with a victim mindset is not the Lord's will for your life, right? right. But the church has created that through the mm -hmm. religious spirit, anti-woman spirit which has then fueled an alternative uprising known as the mm. feminism movement or whatever. And it's wicked. Right. Worldly feminism is wicked. It's right. anti-nuclear family. It's anti-God. Mm -hmm. um, now, of course, it's crept into the church. So they'll say, how could this be anti-God? We're Christian feminists. Like, Just like eliminating mm. women is not right, uh, making women idols and worshiping and, and putting men down in the same position is not mm -hmm. right. Uh, we are, we are created equal. Mm -hmm. We are different. Different does not mean unequal. Right. Uh, there are things that, that you are good at that I wish I was good at and I'll probably never be good at, you know? Yeah. And vice versa. Same as these. Yeah. Yeah. Man, just really, really can, if God didn't want women to speak why would he give them a voice like why would he put a vocal box in them if he didn't want us to speak and he didn't want us to proclaim and declare the word of the lord and have something to say or why would he you know position even esther where he did to save a nation like right. absolutely if he didn't want to use women then it wouldn't be in the bible and here's a, a highly controversial statement Sorry, I'm going to cost you a bunch of people, followers. The book of Hebrews was likely written by a woman. That's right. also another reason why there's no right. name on the authorship. Right. Um, and the, I know, there's some people getting rage angry. I said likely. The author is mm -hmm. unknown, but the, of the suspected authors are Phoebe, Priscilla. Uh, of course, mm -hmm. Paul is suspected. But Paul, Paul wrote a lot of letters. Not all of them made it into the Bible. And he always, always mm. greeted in his yeah. own name and then talked about who wrote with their physical hand on his behalf. But there's a lot of people that believe that one of these apostolic women, one of these prophetic women who were part of the church government, uh, mm -hmm. wrote the book of Hebrews. Right. And before you try to kill me in the comments, um, I said likely because right. it's not known. But that's amazing. Like, that really is amazing. Um, man, yeah, it's time, like, ladies, it's time for the mama bears to arise to protect the children from what society is trying to indoctrinate them with. Like, I know I have a lot of, like, there's a lot of people who watch from all over the world. So we're not just talking about the American church. We're talking about the world as a whole and women voices, you know, um, we literally have people who watch from all around the world. And we've ministered in countries where women are second-class citizens. Right. And that's a whole nother story. Yeah. Um, being an American woman, going into those nations and not, not being seen as equal. Um, 
that's really something. And so when you've experienced that, it puts into a whole nother perspective of like, man, how much the enemy wants to silence women. Yeah. Like, well, absolutely. Because women have a voice and, uh, uh, what is extremely powerful in the women, in the feminine voice is inner is intercession. Mm -hmm. And if, if the Lord wants has given you a plan of intercession or a, a blueprint of intercession over your life, the number one thing the enemy is going to do is try to steal your voice. And, mm -hmm. and I'm not saying that it, because you are a woman, you are just an intercessor and, mm -hmm. uh, or an intercessor at all. Maybe that's not what the Lord called you to, but I think by and large, the majority of intercessors are women. And, mm -hmm. The, the look at how many successful people, even in the secular arena, Hollywood, entertainment industry, there's just this crazy favor on their life. And they're so good mm -hmm. at what they do. And what's mm -hmm. what do they always say? Well, I have a praying grandmother. Mm -hmm. And right now we're seeing the first generation that has really been without the praying grandmother um, and right. the praying mamas. And you see mm -hmm. the product of that. You see some of mm -hmm. these. Yeah. Little brats walking around with money. Yeah. You know, definitely. definitely. But, but what I wanted to say is that women make up the majority of intercessors. Of course, the enemy is going to try and shut your mouth. And of course, he's going to mm -hmm. try and manipulate scripture to do it. You think he has any new tactics? Jesus, the Bible said, as the scriptures say, turn these bread, these stones into bread. What is he trying to do? Mm -hmm. twist scripture to prove right. a demonic point right and, and you think the enemy is smart enough to come up with new tactics the things that he, he brought to the to, to the lord in the wilderness is the same tactic he's got today right i know i get i get a lot of hate in comments um more so on facebook over the past you know so many years but man it's like you're a woman shut up you're a yeah. woman women can't be preachers and then they these guys throw all the scripture at me. I'm like, uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. That's not what the Lord says about me. Yeah. And um, the enemy will never get me to shut up and proclaim the word of the Lord. And you have to be so confident of who you are in Christ. For when the enemy throws those yes. daggers at you and throw, you know, sends those arrows towards you, it's like, no, 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 no. The Lord is my shield and he protects me. And that stuff just flies off me like water on a duck's yeah. back. Like, bro, no, I know who I am. And um, your demons talking. So <laughs> I can't read your comments because I'll get too mad. Yeah. I don't care if you take shots at me. You know, it's like, well, you're the loser that stopped to to, to say something. I see stuff online mm -hmm. every day that I don't like. You know what I do? I, I keep scrolling mm -hmm. and I don't put anything at all. Um, so when people hate on me, it's it's funny. It's like, thank you for helping my algorithm. Because the more comments I get, the more Amen. reach I get, right? So Amen. thank you for your, for your, um, your loser mentality, uh, boosting my algorithm. And it's no big deal, but my mm -hmm. goodness, if there's a comment on your page or on my friend's page, is that makes that sends me over the yeah, I can't I can't look in those comments because I get protective. No, I but, just I just get them with kindness and it's called the Lord is the Lord will have my justice. Yes, absolutely. So, yeah. So I just like, oh wow, you took the time to say something to me. Thank you so much. God bless you. God bless you. Um I think I've done enough to cost you followers today. No, you're fine. <laughs> I am just like super excited for what God is doing right now. He's doing a new thing. And with that new thing is the women voices rising Absolutely. up. That's so, a now word. Yeah. No, it, it is, is a now word. It is. It is a now word. God is a raising up women in the most unlikely places that are going to spearhead some movements in these coming days. And man, they have tenacity. They are tough. They know who they are. And, and man, God is raising up women. Like it's going to be incredible to see who God brings to the forefront to, like I said, spearhead these new moves of God. And like, I'm not talking about moves of God as in, um, Teacup women's studies 
and you know right crumpets so and whatever like women let me just say right now let let me be spitting the truth you do not have to be confined to a women's bible study group you can preach to the masses you can speak to the men you don't have to have a women's ministry yeah even if you're a ministry wife you are you don't have to fit in that box nope. like be free to be you and say what you need to say and you know you don't have to start a women's bible study group and you know have tea party time you don't you yeah. don't you were created for more than that and i'm not dumbing that down i'm saying you know what's the greatness that is on the inside of you now go and do something worthy of that yep absolutely um I, I, it's just so irritating to me when, when like uh, we're together and so like, oh, you guys are in ministry and they'll say something like, oh, I'm the preacher. And like, oh, do you do like a women's group? Like, it, uh, first of all, <laughs> women's groups can be powerful, but when they're making that suggestion, they're thinking it's like tea time with little with little Kelly. Like, mm -hmm. oh, did you hear that verse? We're in Proverbs thirty one, woman. Like. <laughs> Like y'all are more than Proverbs 31 women. Yeah. Like you are a Proverbs 31 woman, but you're also a throat slashing stake driving judge of Israel. we be driving tent pegs, man. Yeah. You know, and that's in, that's in judges. You know, the book that you skip over, go read it. Um, you know, Jesus was found by Mary first. Mm -hmm. She ran, she mm -hmm. found him first. Why? Cause uh, there's too many. Uh, I don't want to go down the path. I'm going to cost you too many followers more than I've already cost you probably. It but, but seriously, the women in ministry does mm -hmm. not mean freaking tea time on Tuesday. And uh, tell them how people treat you when you travel with me. They book me to preach and I bring you along. How do they treat you? Oh, man, you're spilling secrets now. <laughs> um, I have noticed. You get ticked. Okay. Because they there's a holy you. anger inside of me. The way that people treat women in ministry. It's we come together. We are invited together. Amazing. Amazing. So thankful. So grateful for the opportunity. And I'm not talking about the, the pastors treating us like this. It, it is just a mindset of the church. Yes, the people. It, yes it's the people, not the pastors. But... Although it can be the pastors. Go on. And so <laughs> I will... Oh, okay. Prayer line. Prayer line. They think I'm legit and you're cutesy. And I'm not a cutesy, a, a cutesy pastor's wife who's going to sit down and shut up on the front row. Right. Like, that yep. is not me. So, and um, I'm not being disrespectful or anything, but I know who I am. And, like, I know the Lord will give me something to say. But I've noticed you're a firebrand. Yes. They treat you like they, teacup Tuesdays. <laughs> right. But if say we call people up for prayer, everybody will go to your line because the mindset of the church is the man is more anointed right. than the woman. And I'd be like, Well, I can pray too. I can I can, you know, you want a miracle? The Lord can use me too. Yeah. And so seen that a lot in the Western church. Now the churches in different nations are completely different. They want it all. They yeah, want it all the supernatural. They're not going to stop you mid prayer and be like, hmm, first of all, uh, where did you go to seminary um, before? Right. You can pray? Like, good. Right. But, like, man, if the church could only realize, like, like I said, but you're treated lesser than yes, you I am. Are. I am. You're treated less. And than. I, and I will never, be silent for the ministry wives and just sit down and shut up. And this is just the way that it is. No, it doesn't have to be like that. Why right. are we treated less than we're less anointed? We don't have anything to say. Everybody looks to the guy and we are completely ignored in green rooms and book tables. Yeah. But I do want to say like, just because you're married to a minister, doesn't mean that you have to be in ministry. Right. Both you got to be called both ways. Uh, I, I can think of at least three right now off the top of my head where I know the I know the woman, she's a minister, and I have no idea what her husband's name is. 
Right. And I don't want to say that because if he is actually in ministry, no, I'm, <laughs> no I just right. flipped the table on him. But uh, just because your husband is a minister doesn't mean that you have to be ministry caliber. Uh, and vice versa, just because your wife is a minister doesn't mean that you have to get up there and try and pretend like you are as well. We're both called as ministers. She's treated mm -hmm. less than. Right. Oh, look, the mom has her hands full. That makes mm -hmm. me mad. It does. Because let me tell you, ladies, you're not just a mom. Mom is not your identity. Like, yes, it's one facet. It's one calling. Mothering is a ministry. It is. But mm -hmm. if you are called to more, you are not just mom. You're all the things God says you are. Yeah, which can include apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, mm -hmm. evangelist. Goodness. Just if you are a willing vessel to be used by God, God is going to use you. It yeah. doesn't matter what a, one of the two gingers that you are. Yeah, one of the two. I, that's what I said. Yeah. One of the two, the only two. Because yeah. we be spitting the truth. I 10,000 followers lost. <laughs> no, no. Now um, someone needs to tell the truth. There, There's a time and a place. And, and, and telling it in love. Versus right. telling it in hate and harshness. Right. Um, and we can get worked up and, you know, a lot of people are worked up. But in all honesty, it's because there are so many people, men and women, that I see such greatness in. And they will never live up to their potential because, one, the enemy has come after their identity. And that could be gender identity or mindset identity of, you know, oh, I'm an orphan. I'm... I'm less than I, mm -hmm. you know, all these mindset identities. And then the enemy is trying to go after other types of identities. Yeah. And um, like, man, if you could only see what I see in you, that you are destined for greatness, mm -hmm. created with a purpose for such a time as this. And that's not just as in some corny cliche, you know, Esther 414 no, literally, you are created, you were created and set into this timeline on purpose for now. And the people, there are people waiting on you to step up into what you're called to do so that their lives can be changed. There's a ripple effect in the kingdom of God. And if somebody doesn't do it, God will ask the next person to do it, or sometimes not at all. And that doesn't even get fulfilled on this earth. So it's time to arise and shine with the glory of God that's within you, coming out of you to help transform the world on earth as it is in heaven. So super excited. We are living in such amazing times all over the world, all over the world. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going on in your country right now. God is, is on the throne. He is. And he's going to be using the people who are willing vessels in this hour. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, Mr. Yancey, do you have any closing statements? <laughs> yeah, you can uh, You can take all my invitations and go preach. I'm going to relax for a while. <laughs> and little do they know. They're biting off more than they can chew with you. I, yeah. You do a good job at shocking people. I Not because you're trying them. to, but because the, the anointing hits. And yeah. It's, it's powerful. Yeah. It's all Jesus. Well, all Jesus. The expectations and built that you're going to walk around and be like, bless you. And instead, God bless you, you know, sister. Just your shadow falls on them and they go, you know, nuts. They get healed mm -hmm. or they yeah. manifest and the Science, devil comes wonders, out. Wonders, miracles, all deliverance. All them signs. All them signs. Praise God. We, this isn't no smorgasbord where we pick and mm -hmm. choose like, hmm, I don't want the gold dust because mm -hmm. that offends me. Oh, but I'll oh, take the, uh, the blind eyes. Like, no, we'll take them all. I want it all, Jesus. All of it. All of it, all, all of, of it. it, all of it. We honor every sign. We honor every wonder. We honor every mm -hmm. miracle. We honor, honor every healing. Mm -hmm. so. so it's time to step up, ladies. Yeah. Not to dominate and overshadow the men, but to take your your rightful position. Yeah. That's all it is. Kings, You're not taking anything that isn't yours. Right. Because a king reigns and a queen reigns. So you yep. need to step up into that queen position because the king is going to do what he's going to do. So 
He's going to do what he needs to do to rule and reign. And then I'm going to be co-seated with Christ as well and rule and reign from that position also as a queen. Yep. So it's time to arise and shine. <laughs> so if you haven't already hit the subscribe button, so thankful you are here. We're going to be doing this ever so often. I post videos weekly. I want to encourage you to be all that you can be and know this is not the, the military. This is not the U.S. Army, the, but literally the few, stop. The proud. The no, no, no. <laughs> step into your destiny like you were created for so much more. Fall in love with Jesus. Fall in love with Jesus. Get back into his word. The door is on the floor. Seek his face. Hear his voice. Mm -hmm. And, and you won't regret it. Like, man, God is so good. But yeah, we will be seeing you next time. Thank you so much for hanging out. And I hope to see you next time. Bye.